This video is on graphing quantitative data on the TI Inspire. We're going to use a problem from your textbook, The Practice of Statistics, page 81 in chapter 1, question T1.15. So if you'd like to pause the video to get your textbook out so that you can follow along, that'd be a good idea. Okay, the question says, during the early part of the 1994 baseball season, many fans and players noticed that the number of home runs being hit seemed unusually large. Here are the data on the number of home runs hit by American League and National League teams in the early part of the 1994 season. Compare the distributions of home runs for the two leagues graphically and numerically. Write a few sentences summarizing your findings. Okay, the first thing we need to do is put the data into the calculator. So click on the menu key and choose number four, add list and spreadsheet. So we have the American League and the National League, so we'll name one column I'll name it AMER for the American League and the other NAT for the National League. Next I'll just put my cursor in cell 1 of the American League and start typing in the data. The first value is 35 home runs, the next one is 40, etc. When I'm done that I'll go to the top of the National League and start typing that. Once you have your data in the calculator, you need to add a data and statistics page. So if you look at the doc key right above it in blue, it says plus page. So to add a new page, hit control and doc, and we're going to add number five, data and statistics. If I click on the x-axis, it shows me what name list I have. Let's just look at a single quantitative variable to start out with. We'll look at the American League. For a single quantitative variable, the default graph is a dot plot. Notice that I can run my uh, mouse, so on the handheld you can just run your cursor over it and see what the individual values are. Let's see what other options are available for graphs. So if I click on the menu key and go to plot type, I see that I can also change it to a histogram. So notice in, in, in the histogram the way it was set up, if I click on a bar it shows me the values in that bin. So the first one goes from 35 inclusive to 37 non-inclusive. There are no data values in the next one, and this is from 39 inclusive to 41 non-inclusive. So the convention in a histogram is that the left endpoint is included and the right endpoint is not included. If I wanted to make my bin width a little bit wider, I could click on Menu and Plot Properties, Histogram Properties, Bin Settings. Now on a histogram we want our bins all to be of equal bin width, so I'll click on that. And suppose we decide to make the bin width 6. I'll click on OK and notice here that the top of the histogram here got cut off. You can just use your mouse and pull down so that you have that you can view everything. I can also do the same thing here in the X direction. I can just pull that over. Now if I hover on one of the bars I see that the first bar is from 35 inclusive to 41 non-inclusive and that there are two values in there. That's my frequency here. The next one is from 41 inclusive to 47 non-inclusive. Now a lot of students say, well, how many bars are the right amount for a histogram? Uh, usually anywhere between seven and nine. Too many and you might as well make a dot plot. Um, too few and then it all just clumps up. You can see this by dragging on one of the bars. I can take the histogram and I can shrink it down. Now that doesn't look really illustrative. Or I can pull it till I have you know, one big bar. Again, doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Next we'll look at a box and whisker plot. So I'll go to menu, plot type, and number two box plot. So they're called box plots, box and whisker plots. Remember they're comprised of the five number summary. So if I take my mouse and hover here I see that 35 home runs is the minimum value, 49 home runs is the first quartile, a median of 57.5. Remember a median doesn't have to be one of the data values. If I have an even number of data values it's the average of the two middle ones. The third quartile is 68 and the maximum value is 77. So none of the home runs on the teams in the American League were considered outliers. Now it's also interesting to split your page so that you can look at the same data two different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the dock key and choose number five page layout and then I'll choose number two, select layout, and I like layout three, top and bottom. So if you click your mouse on the bottom one so that that's highlighted and go to menu and add another data and statistics page, and I'm just going to 
put the same data, the American League data, there so that I can see it as both a dot plot and a box plot. So often that's a nice way of comparing if you're not sure what you're seeing in one or the other. So our question actually asked us to compare the distribution of home runs for the two leagues. So let's um, add another data and statistics page, control doc, and I'll number five, add data and statistics page. Another way to um, quickly go is you could hit your tab key and that automatically uh, highlights the x-axis. I'm going to put American League there. And then I'm going to go to Menu and Plot Properties and I want to add another x variable. And so I'll click on that, number five. And I want to add National League. And so now you see I have stacked dot plots. So I can look at the two and compare them. Box and whisker plots are also very useful when I'm comparing a quantitative variable broken down by some categorical variable. So I'm going to go to Menu, Plot Type, and Box Plot. So here I'll give it a go. In 1994, the American League teams had a higher median number of home runs than the American League teams, 57.5 home runs versus 50.5 home runs. Both leagues had a lot of variability in the number of home runs hit by teams in their league that year. The range of home runs for the American League teams was slightly higher with 42 home runs compared to the National League with a range of 38 home runs. However, a lot of that overall variability in home runs for the National League team was because of two teams whose number of home runs were low outliers, 29 home runs and 31 home runs. The IQR, interquartile range for the number of home runs for the teams in the National League, was actually less than half that of the American League. The distribution of home runs for the American League team is fairly symmetric, while that of the National League is slightly skewed to the, the two low outliers. Notice that although I, I use the range in talking about the variability, because of these two outliers, the range is very, very sensitive to extreme values. So I want these outliers to be part of the story, but I don't want them to drive the whole story. So the interquartile range was a much better measure of variability to use. And we see that actually the National League has much less variability in number of home runs of teams in that league than the American League team did. If we want to get numerical measures, some summary statistics, let's add a new page, Control Doc, we'll add a calculator page, and we'll go to Menu, Statistics, Number 1, Stack Calculations, and Number 1, One Variable Statistics. We have, we'll look at each separately, the American League and the National League. So our number of list is 1, we'll say OK, and our X list is the American League. The frequency list, that means that each value in our list only counts once. If we had frequency data, we would put the list with the frequencies there, and we'll just say OK and let's see what kind of values it gives us. Notice the title, one variable. Our list is called a mayor. Uh, each value in the list counts once. X bar, the mean of the data, is about 56.9. Some other things we might want to look at. S sub X, the standard deviation if it's a sample, 12.69. Sigma sub X, standard deviation of the population. And notice also here the five number summary, the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the max. That concludes our little intro to the quantitative data on the TI Inspire.